The old coot here coming back at you with another exciting video. Sorry, I had to cut the previous video short because my camera system just completely fell apart on me. <laughs> so we're back now. We're using the old system. Hopefully this works. Anyways, if you've been following along in this meatball series, what I've got here is my breadcrumbs soaked in buttermilk with the paprika and the salt and the pepper just kind of soaking away and the chopped flat leaf parsley. Then I've got a half a pound of pork here that's already been ground. So now what I'm going to do is I've got a pound and a half of chuck roast that I had in the freezer for about an hour. Cut it up just to keep things cold. This whole attachment, so this and the grinder itself was soaking in ice water to cool it down as well. What that cooling does is that helps to decrease the drag, right? So as it goes through the machine, it also helps to keep things less sticky. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to load up some meat here and go ahead and push that in. Just be careful. I like to preload a little bit, maybe get some of this on there too. Okay, and then I'm gonna turn my machine on and just go ahead and push. And if you notice the holes, let's talk about this for a second. So the holes that I'm using are this attachment, right? As opposed to the holy moly attachment, right? So I want this, cause I want a little more texture to the meatballs as I'm grinding that chuck roast. So now I'm just gonna push. Right, you see the meat's coming out. So So every once in a while you do get a little sticky spot, which is totally fine. Just try not to push too far down with your wooden dowel or whatever your machine comes with. Usually there's like a safety collar right here so that you don't go too far down into the actual auger part. But this works for me, and this is what I've been using, so here we go. There we go. Get a little more chuck in there. Chuck. Another quick tip is rotate your bowl. So as you go, that way you don't get it all in one spot, but just rotate your bowl so that the meat can kind of fall in. But as you can see, the meat's coming out pretty nice. It's all separated out. This is the texture that I want and, and cooling and chilling this attachment is what really helped out the most, keeping all this meat moving through there freely. So let's go back on again. Last one. They got Elias, but he came back. Brown truck. Coming through. Almost there. Put some of this back in. Some of this in there. And we're just about there. Okay, so at this point, I'm not going to push anymore, obviously. Okay, if you heard the motor ramping up, it basically means there's nothing in here to grind anymore, nothing worth any sustenance or, you know, immediate attention. But basically, that's all my ground chuck. This is all my ground meats. So I'm going to take care of this in a minute. The cutting board, I'm immediately going to take to the sink. It's important to wash this or at least get it rinsed before all those juices soak in, so to speak. But we are continuing our pasta, I'm oh, sorry, the meatball making process. Pasta's in the next series. Stay tuned for that. We're gonna make some fresh pasta in the next series. But anyways, I just wanna give it a good rinse. Leave it there. You could put some soap on it or whatever, just to keep things sanitary and clean all the good stuff. I should kind of tidy up a little bit, so I'm gonna move this over, move this over. Actually disconnect this guy. Okay, so 
Back to the cooking process at hand, the sauce and the whole nine yards. Let's grab our ground chuck and all the pieces that came with it. Whoops. They got Elias twice. Okay. Okay, so here's where things get down and dirty. Basically, I'm going to try to do this with one hand. <laughs> Basically, what's going on here is I want to mix all this, right, everything together. Now I've got all the ingredients in and make them and form them into little tiny meatballs. And what I'm going to do is I've got a little tray over here. I've got a little fan. I always got a fan going because it's hot. It's always hot. Okay, so here's my, what is this, Nordic Ware nonstick baking sheet. You could, after you form your meatballs, you could bake them in the oven if you want instead of frying them. I find that frying them in the pan that you're going to use just it just puts more flavor into the whole dish, the whole final dish. So that's what that's what I like doing. That's why I like putting those in there. You get the idea. Let me go back over. I'm missing. Ah, ice cream scooper. Okay, very important to form the meatballs. We're going to make golf ball sized meatballs. And I want to make sure I do that. So get this out of the way. Again, that's going to give a good wash here in a second. Okay, now here's where it gets down and dirty. Just get your hands in there. I'm showing everybody that, yes, you can do this with one hand. A good trick is if you have some water on hand, like that ice water back there, you can dip your hands in the ice water to keep everything from sticking. But I find that if I don't use the egg, like I don't put eggs in these, I think eggs in the meatballs just make them more, like people use it as a binding agent, but I think it just makes your meatballs more hard. Okay, quick restaurant tip. Let's say you only have one hand. What you can do is grab a towel. Oh, okay. Check this out. Grab a towel. Hold it up. Put your bowl on the towel. Now it doesn't move around as much. Oh, little, little restaurant secrets. Teaching everybody in these videos. Hope you guys are liking this. Hit that like button down there below. Hit the subscribe button. Anyways, you get the idea. Also, check out the description section for all the toys and tools that I'm using today. So I want to try and mix these up. There is going to come a point where I'm going to have to cut this video because I do need two hands to make the meatballs. But I will try my best to keep this video rolling as long as I possibly can so that oh, I can get this going. But anyways, you kind of get the idea. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the video off pretty soon here. I'm going to properly mix this. Roll them all out on this cookie sheet with this ice cream scooper. I kind of like this one better. It's a little smaller, you know, than, than the most. But basically the idea is you just want to pull out like a little portion like this size, right? Get your meatball. Use your two hands to make about like a golf ball size meatball. Anyways, I'll be back with another video to show you the final meatballs. And then we'll get into cooking. We'll talk about the sauce. We'll talk about everything else. So stay tuned, hit that like button in the meantime, subscribe button, notification, all the good stuff, and I will catch you all in the next exciting video.